video series. Last week, we talked about how something gets recycled, and this week we're going to talk about what should we keep out of the recycling bin and why. We've all been there. We stand in front of a recycling bin with something that we're not sure is recyclable, but we hope it is. So with all the best intentions, we toss it in the recycling bin because it's too painful to send to the landfill. It should be recyclable, we might think to ourselves, and in it goes. We have a name for this in the recycling biz. We call it wish cycling. Putting non-recyclable items in the recycling bin with the hopes that it will be recycled. While we appreciate the intent behind it, wish cycling doesn't go the way you might think. Instead, you're likely contributing to an increase in recycling contaminants, which actually can damage our recycling equipment, pose health and safety risks to our workers, and devalue the materials that are actually recyclable. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that if you throw one thing that isn't recyclable in the bin, that we'll have to throw the whole load of recycling in the trash, but we do want to let people know that when they try to recycle everything, they could be doing much more harm than good. So instead of wish cycling, we ask you to keep an important phrase in mind as a recycler. When in doubt, throw it out. And it's important to know the top items that should never go in your recycling bin, no matter where you live. In this video, we're going to go over the top items no recycling facility wants to see in the recycling bin. Number one, food or liquid left in containers. Recycling facility have people working in the facility handling your recyclables. When you recycle a soda bottle half full of soda or an aluminum foil with some uneaten burrito inside or a takeout container with food stuck to it, recycling workers are in danger of getting sick from mold, getting stung by wasps, or coming in contact with rats who are attracted by the smells. The odor can also create an incredibly unpleasant workplace. In addition, imagine a beautiful load of paper that people worked hard to recycle correctly. Now. Imagine someone recycled a yogurt tub half full of yogurt. That yogurt is going to spill all over the papers and then we can't send those papers to be recycled. No need to scrub your recyclables until they're spotless. Just make sure they're empty of whatever food or liquid was inside. If you do have access to a sink at the time, give your container a quick rinse with a shot of water and shake it up. High up on the list of contaminants is hazardous materials. You'd be surprised how many scary items we get in the recycling that are not only not recyclable at all, but also pose a big health and safety risk to our workers. So number two is ammo and other explosives. If you have them, please bring them to your local sheriff's office. Do not recycle them. Number three, hazardous materials like paint, motor oil, syringes, or needles. These should all go to your local hazardous materials management facility. The next category of materials to keep out of your curbside bin is what we might call hard to recycle materials. These are materials that can't be recycled in your regular bin because they physically can't be sorted in our facility, but there is a recycling alternative to landfilling them. That brings us to number four, plastic bags. There are lots of moving gears and wheels in a recycling facility and plastic bags wind around them, jamming up the machinery. At our local recycling facility, workers have to shut everything down twice a day to crawl in and cut the bags out of the equipment so it can function properly. You can take stretchy plastic bags to many participating grocery stores to be recycled. Number five on the list, scrap metal. Definitely recyclable, but not in single stream recycling since it'll damage recycling equipment by cutting conveyor belts up or getting jammed in machinery. Even something as small as a coat hanger could get tangled up and rip up equipment but no need to trash it, there are scrap metal buyers and drop-offs all over the place since it's definitely a valuable material. Number six, shredded paper will fall through the cracks in a recycling facility and it's too small to sort. You can compost shredded paper if there's no plastic in it and some communities have shred collection days or drop-off centers that accept it. But the best thing to do is not shred if you can, since shredding significantly shortens the lifespan of a piece of paper that could have been recycled into more paper products. The last category of things to keep out of your recycling bin is just materials that should go to the landfill, or better yet, avoid it. We see them enough in the recycling that we have to call them out specifically. Item number seven, there are lots of non-recyclable plastics like candy wrappers, chip bags, straws, and plastic pouches. These are all things for which there isn't a market, that is, no one buys them to turn them into something new. So if you have them, they need to go in the trash. Item number eight. Ceramics and drinking glasses and other durable glass. You may think glass jar, drinking glass, same thing, but they're not. These glass products can't be recycled in the single stream because they have a higher melting temperature than single-use glass, like food and beverage containers. So if a glass recycler tries to melt down your vase with your beer bottle, 
Your vase won't melt, and it'll remain a chunk while the beer bottle will melt to a liquid. In conclusion, knowing what stays out of the single stream recycling bin is just as important as knowing what goes in. The best thing to do is to look at your local guidelines, recycle only those things, and if you're not sure about something, either put it in the trash or give your local recycler a call. Thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you next week. Hello everyone, my name is Randy Mormon and I am the Community Campaigns Director at EcoCycle. And I'm excited to have with me today, Denver City Councilman Chris Herndon. Chris, it's great to have you with us. Thank you, Randy. Great to be a part of the Zero Waste video series. So this week's Zero Waste video was on items we want to keep out of the recycle cart, our purple bin, because they will either damage the equipment at the recycling facility, or they could pose a risk to the workers, or actually these items will become a contaminant in the materials that we want to recycle, that we want to put back in the market and be made into new products. Now, if you're like me, I want to avoid items that I can't recycle. So I first try to reduce my waste and then look for products that I can recycle. Now, some of the items that we can't put in our purple cart, we can actually recycle and we may have to take them to a drop-off location or have the city come and pick them up from us. So Councilman Herndon, if I have several items in my house like bleach or automobile batteries, fertilizers, pesticides, and fluorescent bulbs, let's say, I know I can't put those in my purple cart. So what can I do with these items to either recycle or dispose of them properly? Well, thanks, Randy, that is a great question. So here in the city and county of Denver, Residents can go to the denvergov.org Denver Recycles webpage. So there at the top of the page, and Randy's going to walk you through this, is a tab for hazardous waste. If you pull that tab down, you can go to and select Managing Household Hazardous Waste. This will take you to a page with a list of items that you might find in your home that are not recyclable in the purple cart and should not be put in the trash either. On the right is a tab that allows you to search the recycling directory and by typing in the directory your item, say for example, fluorescent lights, it will give you a list of locations or places that will take back these items, like Home Depot, for example, when you're dealing with compact fluorescent lights. Now, if I don't have a vehicle or a way to drop off items, is there another option for someone to come to my home and, and pick them up in Denver? Yes, so the city provides a service to pick up household hazardous items and charges $15 for each location, for each collection, excuse me. You can see the items that are acceptable on the Hazardous Household Waste Collection webpage back under the Hazardous Waste tab. There you can also schedule a pickup by calling 1-800-449-7587 or you can go online www.wmatyourdoor.com. Great, and I can see on this page that there are lots of items that they will pick up, which is really great. Like including, I'm seeing like hobby chemicals, uh, weed killer, and, and even smoke detectors, but uh, they do have an extra charge for smoke detectors. It's $14 each. Um, so this is a really great resource that the city has. Now, is there any way I can take all of my items like this and drop them off at one location? Yes, sustainability has a drop off location located at 1270 South Bandit Street. They take many items like electronics, paint, batteries, bikes, books, CDs, DVDs, styrofoam, scrap metal, and shoes. Oh, great. Now, does sustainability have a fee for that? Yes, they have a $2 facility fee per car, and electronics are charged by the pound. So I understand they have to charge more for electronics because it's, it's very labor intensive to take apart the electronics and all the pieces and disassemble to be re actually be recycled. You know, and, and the other thing that I learned the other day that's really great about sustainability is they not only recycle all of these items, but they also hire employees that are part of our significantly underemployed segment of our community. So folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So Councilman Hernan, let's close out with two items that I think almost all of us have at some point or another, and that's mattresses and paint. What do we do with those? Ah, uh, yes. Well, Paint Care has a great statewide program to take back and recycle used paint. When we purchase new paint, we pay a small fee that goes into the collection program, and Paint Care provides collection sites throughout the state at no extra cost. 
I encourage everyone to go to the Paint Care website and find the location nearest them. There are two sites in Denver. Awesome, and now what about, what do we do with mattresses? And that is another great story. Just like sustainability, Spring Back here in Denver hires folks with barriers to employment so they can rebuild their lives through a valuable job. Spring Back takes mattresses and box springs for recycling and anyone can drop off their mattress and box springs at their location, or you can arrange to have Springback come and pick them up. Well, that, that is great information. We covered a lot today, and, and thank you again, Councilman Herndon, for taking the time to go over with us all these great opportunities in Denver to recycle and properly dispose of items that don't belong in our purple recycle cart. Remember to download the Denver Trash and Recycling app, where you can be informed of your waste collection days including large item pickup. That day is very important. Learn more about where you can take your hard to recycle items under using the recycling directory, and you can even play some recycling games. Great, thanks again. <music>